The veteran politician, the late Gordon Mortart, was among the first South Sudanese to join the Sudan Police College in Amdurman in the 1950s, and later led the Anyanya Patriotic Front. He also held many distinguished positions within the political structure in the Southern Sudan. Thus, what was his role as president of the non-provincial government in Southern region? Our guest on the program is the son of the late Gordon Mortat, Mr. Martin Mortat. Join us as we discuss the important legacy of his late father, Gordon Mortat, only here on Beyond the Headlines. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Eunice. Yes, you're most welcome. In continuing with our previous conversation, where you talked to us about your father, you know, going through his childhood from when he was in the cattle camp, all the way through his elementary education, then when he joined the colonial police college, police force, as well as the Sudan Police College in Omdurman in the 1950s. Now let's talk about the events that happened with the Tariq mutiny in 1955. Can you please briefly talk about the Tariq mutiny and also talk about that period in your father's history when he was sent to work in Sudan? Right, okay. Uh, uh, Tariq uh, happened at the background of the uh, British were now leaving, uh, leaving Sudan. Sudan was uh, earmarked to become an independent country uh, by the 1st of 1st, 1956. So there was a policy called Sudanization. So the word Sudanization means all the jobs that the British were holding in South Sudan have to go to Sudanese, likewise in the whole of Sudan. And it happened that in the whole of South Sudan, overnight, all the British administrators were replaced by North, Northern Sudanese. So you have got Northern Sudanese who became the police officers, who became the district commissioners. So everybody apart from only the estimates was that there were nearly eight South Sudanese officials. Right or the percent the percentage of South Sudanese officials holding their positions were very few. So overnight, if you were a young person in South Sudan in 1955, you will see all the jobs going to Northern Sudanese. And this created a lot of animosity. And this created a lot of animosities. Everybody started to worry mm -hmm. because obviously there are things that. Uh, South Sudanese by then thought of themselves they are Africans mm -hmm. and they saw the Northern Sudanese as Arab because those are Arab speakers. They started to say, no, we are not going to allow the Arabs to rule us. Mm -hmm. And then it created all the problems. Yeah. And then to make these things worse, the army that was stationed called the Equatorial Corps, that was the army uh, that was in South Sudan by then predominantly made of South Sudanese. Yeah, uh, people, famous people like uh, Tafing, General Tafing was uh, a junior officer. You have so many people. There is a guy called, also I remember I met him. He's called Bol. Uh, he was also part of 1955 rebellion. And there were so many, the called Mo. Uh, who was one of those people who was also in 1955. So the army, Southern Sudanese officers decided to rebel. Mm -hmm. And then they rebelled in Torit. And Torit became, and that was August of 18, 1955. The Torit officers uh, took uh, charge of Torit and they started firing, fighting against the Northern Sudanese mm -hmm. by then. Of course, uh, uh, all these are documented. There's uh, a lot of uh, books written about uh, Torit uh, mutiny. 
and so on. So, and that was nine, August, uh, the 18th of August, 1955. We still celebrate that year in South Sudan, and that is called the Torit Uprising. For all you, you youngsters, uh, South Sudanese students, you learn a lot about uh, the Torit Uprising. That was 18th of August, 1955. Now so my father- time, Yes, up to that time, your father then was moved to Sudan to work there. All right, okay. My father, uh, af after the 1955, they find themselves running, uh, running Bar Ghazal. Himself being in charge of the police, Louis Bay was in charge of the uh, administration, and somebody called Mo, who was in charge of the army. So, Southerners were running the whole of, of Bar Ghazal. But again, uh, by 1957, uh, the the government of Khartoum was able to lend troops. Uh, so a lot of troops landed from, from Sudan. A lot of troops landed, landed in Wau. And, uh, and the, government, uh, the government managed to bring all, all, all the necessary troops to Wau. And my father was transferred from Wau. He was transferred to Adbara. Because being a police inspector, he was able to get uh, security reports because of being a senior officer in the police, he was able to get security reports. And the security reports that he will get is like how many troops are in uh, are going to Torit, uh, whether there has been fighting between the Anyanyas and the government, and so on. So uh, the government of Sudan by then was looking suspiciously and uh, South Sudanese who were senior officers, they suspect them that they are sympathetic with the rebels. They are sympathetic with the Torit uh, rebellion. So, and they said, we need to move, move all of them to Khartoum. Yes, and it was moved to Adbara. Mm. Um, Brother Martin, could you please tell us about what made your father go down Mortad Mayemo Bordok decide to become an assistant district commissioner or ADC? Uh, that, that is a very good question, uh, Sister Eunice. Now, I remember when we talked last time about the 1955 uh, uh, rebellion in Tori, uh, many S South Sudanese uh, offic uh, officers in police, police officers were transferred to, to the north. My father was transferred to Adbara. Also, uh, many, many people were, were transferred. Uh, uh, some junior officers were transferred. So these are Southern Sudanese being transferred from Southern Sudan to uh, work in North Sudan. Because the North Sudan government was fearful of them. Exactly, because government now was afraid that these guys are going to get security reports and they are going to be leaking information to the rebels. So uh, one of the, my father reminded us one day that there was an officer that was transferred to Adbara, a junior officer, because uh, him and Elia Lope Wire were the most senior among South Sudanese. And some of the junior officers, they recommended, he, he recommended so many junior officers. And one of the junior officers was transferred to Adbara. And he told him when he was in the, when, when he was transferred to another area, yeah, one of the Northern Sudanese told him, look, you guys are, are transferring information, you're passing information on, on to, your, to, to the rebels, and we want you also to join them. If you, if you don't join them, we can kill you and so on. So, so he was telling him how, how things have changed, how the Northern Sudanese look at them suspiciously. And they're and actually then, threats as well, threatening them. I threatened them, yeah. And then my father found himself that he was not doing his police duties like before. He was just uh, given an office and he was just staying in the office. And then and, uh, things were not, he was not seeing things getting better. So they were so, keeping information from him. Yes, and he was not allowed to work in South Sudan. Now he has to now devise a way that can help him to go back to South Sudan. And in those days, it's possible for you to transfer from the police service to administration service, yeah? So, and that's why he managed to transfer himself from the police to become a district uh, commissioner, yeah? Mm -hmm. and then, of course, uh, he was commissioned 
and he was now sent to Barzal again to go and work. So your father was very clever, you know? Yeah, he knew, he knew that he wanted to go back, mm -hmm. uh, but he cannot go back as a police officer anymore mm -hmm. because they, they would not allow him to, to go back as a police officer. And also, he didn't want his people to, to be mistreated because in the police, is different from co uh, district commissioners because as a police officer, you will be accusing other people that they are they are joining rebellion. You will be imprisoning people. So he didn't want to be uh, this tool. He didn't want to be a tool used to oppress uh, his people. And he thought it's better for him now to abandon the police, even though he loves police very much. So he has to abandon, abandon the police and move on to district commissioners. Yeah. And the work of the district commissioner was that they will be working closely with the chiefs to administer the areas. Like if there is election, they will be in charge of, of elections. They will be in charge of collecting uh, taxation and they will coordinate with the chiefs to make sure that uh, uh, issues uh, threatening security uh, or issues that can lead to instability, the tribal fights, they should all be, uh, be administered properly issues that can lead to uh, 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 tribal infights should be stopped and so on. So there were administrating areas, ensuring that there is peace and so on. And also if there is election, as I've said, they, they have to, to run the election. And, uh, and I think they, they've run the election, one of the elections in South Sudan, uh, that was in Tony area. My father was, the, was in charge of Tony. In, in those days, and there was an election. Uh, I think that was 1958 uh, election. Not not 58. That was 57 election. Or something that 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 he was uh, uh, he helped to run w one of the elections. I, I think it was there 1960 something. But but I'll you, I'll, I'll check it. I'll, I'll I'll check it for maybe next time we can we can discuss that. Uh, After he became the district commissioner, in what area was he the district commissioner? Right, he was a district commissioner uh, in in Bargazal area. In so he worked, area. yeah, he worked in Tonj and he worked in Kwajuk. Kwajuk, uh, he worked in Gogrial area, mm -hmm. right? And he was occasionally visiting uh, visiting a will, yeah, to to work. But mainly, mainly uh, he worked in 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 Gogrial area and Tonj. And a lot of chiefs they still remember him. Uh, many, many people still remember uh, him, especially youngsters, people who were younger by then, but now they are a bit older. They remember cases that he handled and, and everything. Mm -hmm. oh, that's very good. Now, what led him to join the Southern Front Party in um, 1964? Because the students, Southern Sudan at the time, we had political parties uh, so that we could be able to fight for our rights um, and have uh, politicians who can go ahead and voice our concerns with, within the Sudan government. So Southern Front was one of the parties and also another one was uh, Sanu. So yeah. what led your father to join the Southern Front in 1964? Right, that, that's a good question. Uh, what was happened before 1964, there was Abud era. Abud was the, uh, the dictator ruling uh, Sudan and Sudan was ruled by the army. Right, so 1964, uh, people went on demonstration to say they, they don't want to be ruled by the army anymore. Now, the events happened so fast that there was no time to establish different political parties that, that uh, South Sudanese could belong to. Because obviously the, the parties that the older parties like the Liberal Party, these parties were already the, the time has has passed them. So a lot of uh, South Sudanese who were in Khartoum decided to organize themselves under a banner called Southern Front. Yeah. Just like the 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 National Islamic Front. There is amalgamation of all the Islamic movements. Okay, Southerners thought, okay, let us create also Southern Front that will 
cater for all South Sudanese, and then we tackle the issue of South Sudanese. And then, so that was just a front, but at the later stage, it was trans transformed into a political party and became a political party. party. So your father decided to join this important Southern Front Party? Yes, he, is, he decided to join it as an official and he worked with so many of his colleagues, uh, uh, people like Clement Mboro, uh, Uncle Bono Malwal, Uncle Abel Elier, uh, and Hilary Paolo Logali. So, so, so many of the elites of the intellectuals of, of uh, South Sudanese by then, they were all members of, of, of South, South, Southern Front. And of course, by the coming of uh, 1964, when the Sanwin went in with the coming of uh, Uncle w uh, William Dengnial, they formed a political party called Sano, and then Southern, uh, so Southern Front became a political party. And the Southern Front was calling for the self-determination of South Sudan. Mm -hmm. That is what uh, Southern Front stood for. Yes. And that's why people joined it. Now, Brother Martin, um, later on, your father joined the liberation struggle following the killings of educated Southern Sudanese. Why did he see this as an important step uh, to take in order to join this liberation struggle, also known as the Anyanya Guerrilla Movement? Right, that's a good question. My father, similar to people who were like-minded, people who were thinking like him, they, they thought 1964 will bring in a solution to the problem of Southern Sudan by then. The, 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 the uh, government of Khartoum or the Northern Sudanese elites, they used to call it the problem of South Sudan. So they, they thought peace, uh, the pro all the issues are going to be tackled because South Sudanese only wanted uh, uh, the region to be recognized and they could be given uh, f uh, federation yeah, or federalism. But then the massacres of 1965 led, led a lot of people to, to conclude that there's no any hope. There's no hope that the government in Northern, in Northern Sudan are serious about solving the, the problem of South Sudan. Because the massacres of 1965, the killing of the elites, uh, my father by then was a minister and he went with uh, Uncle Clement Mboro, who was the Minister of Interior. This is one of the most senior government uh, ministries that was given to, uh, to South Sudanese. So he went and he found there was a lot of killing. Uh, they, 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 they went uh, to Malakal, and then they flew to Wau, and they find the, the Wau massacre of 1965 where a lot of people were killed in Wau, and they find in Juba also, a lot of people were killed. So that made my father to conclude, like many of his generation, people who are like-minded, that there's no any way forward but to join the rebellion, and to and to fight the system because uh northerners they they thought northern sudanese will never change okay so th that is the reason why he joined uh, the rebellion now when he joined he went uh, straight to uh, of course being a, a government official he he went for a treatment he was going for treatment to kenya and from Kenya, he, he, he decided to join the rebellion. And so he went and he has sympathy, sympathy with Agri Jardin. He likes Agri Jardin. So he, because he, he met him before during the round table conference. So he joined the Nile provision, uh, he joined the, uh, uh, the provisional government of, of South Sudan. Yeah. So that provisional government of South Sudan was run by Agri Jardin. And Agri Jardin offered him an acting uh, as to act as a minister of uh, foreign affairs. Now, um, was was the Southern Sudan provisional government a, a government within Southern Sudan itself, or was it a political party? It was a rebel movement. It was a rebel movement that was fighting for independence of South Sudan, 
but they set up a government called the Provisional Government of South Sudan. And so the idea is that the government will, will take over the running uh, the, of affairs of South Sudan, but they have an army that was fighting for independence of South Sudan. Mm -hmm. but, but the civilian government is the one that is directing the army. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the name of the army itself, of the Southern Sudan Provisional Government? Was the it army, Anyanya? It was Anyanya. It was referred to us as Anyanya. Yeah, it was referred to as Anyanya. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we also read in history that Sanu formed Anyanya. So there could be a bit of confusion. Could you clarify that? Right, because the uh, originally uh, every uh, all southerners were Sanu. They were part of uh, of Sudan uh, closed district. There was a part uh, that big name of uh, the big umbrella of which Sanu. A lot of leaders were were part of Sanu. You have Udo who was part of Sanu, uh, <clears throat> uh, late uh, William William Dengnial. So Sano was the umbrella where all the everybody was was working under. And you remember the famous book that was written by William William Dengnial and and Joseph Adoho. Yeah. yeah. Could you please tell us what position your father held within the Southern Sudan Provisional Government? Right. That's a good question. Uh, to begin with, when he joined the Southern Sudan Provisional Government. Agri Jaden gave him the position of Minister of Agriculture. But within a short time, he also gave him the position of Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. So tell us uh, about the formation of the Nile Provisional Government and your father becoming president of the Nile Provisional Government. Right. Uh, to begin with, uh, when uh, South Sudan Provisional Government was dissolved, yeah, it was dissolved for so many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons they, they, they didn't have enough arms, the issue of arms, and the squabbles among politicians. Politicians were quarreling and so on. Now, again, there was a conference, and the conference did an election, right? And that was done in an area called Anyidi. And the election, uh, Gordon Mortad was elected as the leader, and the Nile Provisional Government was formed as a, again as a the as a movement that was meant to fight for total independence of South Sudan, so, among so other movements within that time. But always the component will be there are politicians who are in charge of the army. Uh, for so they are the one who direct the, the 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 liberation, and then the armies are the one that will fight for for the liberation. Yeah, mm -hmm. but again, uh, under Nile Provisional Government, the forces also in Southern Sudan Provisional Government, they they had they had the big vision of mixing all the forces, of making sure that there is a unified force of all from all different groups of South Sudan. So they were mixing, mixing the armies. It started with the Southern Sudan Provision Government. They were mixing uh, people from different tribes. They will mix them and then they will send, they'll send them to, uh, to operate together. They, so there was a group that was sent, for instance, to Bor, in which case uh, uh, people like uh, uh, Peter Cirillo, yeah, our hero who recently died. Peter Cirillo went to Bor and was one of those people who who uh, who uh, fought in Bor. Yeah, and then they, they returned. And, okay. And when was the non provisional government formed? What year was this? Now, now the non provisional government was formed around 1968. 1968. Right? After the dissolution or after the, the demise of uh, of Southern Sudan Provisional Government. When Southern Sudan Provisional Government, uh, when the leader resigned and the, and the movement failed, uh, then election was done around 1968, and then uh, the Nile Provisional Government was formed around that time. 
So can you talk uh, about him becoming elected president of the African National Front? Yes. Uh, when, when it came to the election of the, of the uh, uh, African Front, it happened after uh, when they became, when they opposed the uh, Disalba Agreement. Because uh, one of the groups that opposed the uh, Disalba Agreement, which is the agreement that brought uh, peace from 1972 to 1983. Now, so many people were opposed. Uh, they were opposing uh, the, the agreement, and one of them was my late father, and they formed a group called uh, African National Front. And from there, obviously, they, they explained their policies. And uh, so and they were still pushing for liberation of, of South Sudan, the, their ideals. They were not, they, it was like a pressure group, ensuring that the, all these ideals are there and they are, they're not going to be abandoned. This is quite valuable information that many of us are learning for the first time. So thank you so much, uh, Brother Gordon, uh, Brother Martin Mortat. We appreciate you talking to us about your late father who played a critical role in our liberation struggle, which enabled us to have our independence today. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page at Sunrise Media.